Hello. Hey, everybody. We're going to get going in just three minutes. So if you guys want to start finding your chairs, they are in alphabetical order. You all graduated. You should be able to handle that. Please, sweet Jesus. Okay, please find your spots. Alphabetical order. Take a seat. Chloe, you look gorgeous. Chloe, right there where you need to be, honey. Have a seat, graduates.
gentlemen, it's time. Good afternoon and welcome graduates, family, friends watching from home as we as a community celebrate Green All High's graduating class of 2020. I'm Melissa Marley and I'm honored to be your MC here for the evening, uh, I guess the afternoon. First things first before we begin, try to keep social distancing in mind today. And right now, if I can have you all pull out your cell phones and put them on airplane mode. You cannot watch us live streamed while we're here. It's gonna interrupt with all the signals. So just put it on airplane mode. You can keep your uh, cameras out. You just can't watch the live stream of us while we're here. So how did we get here today? Persistence, planning, really, your parents. See, while you guys have been grinding it out for 13 years trying to graduate, your parents have been waiting for this day too. And when they thought you might miss out on it, they knew that this would be a memory that you would want to capture and have forever. So they planned this for you. A traditional grad would have had you walking across the stage at the Conexus. Your parents would have watched from the audience. You would have earned your hard-earned diploma, but COVID changed things for us this year, made it a little more complicated. COVID denied you your stag, your stagette, your co-stag, your pre-grad, your grad party, your senior prank day, but it did give you the longest senior skip day of all time. <laughs> and you guys got to double down on grad. You got boxes filled by your teachers and the staff members of Greenall. Greenall put together a virtual grad for you and then delivered those boxes to your house and you got to celebrate your graduation already at home with your families. But then the communities that raised you got together and decided that they wanted to lift you up a little higher. And that's why we are all here today. We had a group of women come together to fundraise, to organize, to plan, and to communicate for you. So if we can look over to the side, let's give a huge shout out to Carla Wilchowie, Penny Johnson, Shannon Strudwick, Nicole Volman, and Lisa Stout. The committee came together because they shared a goal. They wanted to give you a gift, an irreplaceable gift of having your graduation together. This is the last time you may be all together in the same space and place. They say that you are an average of the five closest people to you. Who were your five throughout high school? Take a minute, look around. Yeah, you're making eye contact with them, it's okay. During high school, you formed bonds. You developed friendships that helped you carry you through the trials and tribulations of your adolescence. These were kids that lived across the street from you, played on your soccer teams right here in this field. These were kids who carried you through some of your hardest times. And some of you have maintained those relationships since kindergarten. Other people in this space you might have only started learning and getting to know in your senior year. Have your five people changed? from the grade nine year? Did your letters reveal how quickly things can change in four short years when you read them? I bet some of your letters reminded you that sometimes relationships are fractured. They fall away, they become distant, they become replaced with other relationships. But some of you have also learned through high school that you have to patch things up. Nothing is worth a little comment or a moment to wipe away hundreds of hours of laughing together, pulling each other's trucks out of the ditches spending time together with each other just when you're bored, or helping you cheat with one another to get through your final exams. What really brought you together was high school. Graduates, take a moment, look around, and appreciate these people here with you today. You see, this may be the last time you also have the same event in your lives. Because as adolescents, adolescents are told what to do by adults. We told you when you could start school, when you could graduate, when you could get your licenses, when you could get your first jobs. You've all been doing what you have to do. Now you get to do whatever you want to do. And some of the people sitting around you will walk that path with you. And some other people you will never see after today. They'll walk on their own path, their own direction at their own time. You have all been going through similar events and that's the beauty. You have shared experiences. So today, let's celebrate those memories. Like the time Anna Kitchen and Rebecca Carroll let their cars accidentally kiss bumpers in the parking lot. 
Or Dylan Semank, who casually strolls into class in his three-quarter length pea coat five minutes late every time with a Timmy's. How about Josh jamming out in the front foyer? Or how about Jason Colby, who failed in their abilities to execute a piggyback and went through the drywall in the shop? There's the fact that Bryce Bell can rock the Canadian tuxedo when every other guy is wearing joggers. Or the fact that Chloe Loker and Brooke Hampson were actually allowed to play on the senior volleyball team, even though they were brunettes and not blondes. And who doesn't appreciate Cameron Jones's drip? I see you in the back row, Cameron. Or your extremely awkward self-congratulatory moves on the court after you've scored a kill, after Chris dug up the ball and Bowden back said it to you. That major project you all dreaded until you found out one of the Kozan triplets was going to be in your group. Lucky break for you. Or the fact that Baron and Luke might be the most dysfunctional, long-lasting couple of high school who needs marriage counseling. <laughs> the time Jonah and Gage skipped football practice to buy that tent that you all pay money to party in for your TNT parties. <laughs> And the fact that that entrepreneurial spirit probably makes a hell of a lot more money than the food dudes did trying to sell pizza in the front foyer. Anyone remember the first time Sarah Schutz actually smiled at you in a hallway? Or the time that Max Bender got kicked out after faking three free throws in a row in a basketball game? The time that Darby led every warm up to knock out the jitters before you all got up on stage to perform? The fact that Lane Novak and Colby Lang have a long-lasting bromance and they would dress the same one day of the week. And Ethan McAlpin would show up in a suit every Friday and be confused as a teacher by subs in the building. The fact that Craig had to pick so much confetti out of his hair after the cannon went off because you made it through psych class. Brighton and your fancy Hot Wheels car that I almost stole one day in the parking lot when you let me sit in it. Hunter Sattler, where are you at, Hunter? Remember that time I caught you vaping at the football game and then you just changed tactics and blew it into your hoodie instead? I appreciate that. So today, as we celebrate, think about your five people. Think about your 15, your 50. Look around and look at the 150 kids that you're graduating today and appreciate that you shared that moment with them. Spend your time in the memories, but move forward into your future. So... Let's get this show started. We are all going to stand, if we're able, rise for O Canada, and that's gonna be sung for us by Jenna Sabatston. Have a seat, graduates. That was beautiful, Jenna. Thank you. We are going to kick off our event with some words from your principal, Mr. Jason Weitzel. <clears throat> Why did we listen to that terrible can version of O Canada every morning? We should have had you there, Jenna. 
Good afternoon, graduates and families watching at home. Uh, this is amazing. I am so pleased that, uh, that we're all here today, that we get to face-to-face to -face congratulate you and, and participate in something today. Uh, I've been a principal at high schools for 12 years now. Uh, I could have picked some of the ones and just rehashed them. Uh, I'm going to reread what I, I shared at the virtual grad because I, I wanted to share them with you in person. Mr. Harding and I, when, when we did our speeches in the gym, uh, that was awkward. It was lonely. It, it wasn't what we wanted. We wanted to see you and greet you. And so this opportunity today, it just, it means so much. Uh, it is an honor for me to share greetings with you and a bit of a message on behalf of uh, our Griffin staff, all of our teachers at Greenall, and all the teachers who've been there with you all the way through your, your school career. Uh, when I sat down to capture these thoughts, I wanted to share with you, I have to admit, found myself frustrated because like each of you, the virtual grad that, that we did enjoy wasn't something that we could have imagined or, or hoped for. Yet, here we are today in person, face to face, sharing the connection to celebrate your graduation in a way that we have come to know through graduation traditions. And I hope to, my message to you, our dear graduate, speaks to that connection with you that we as your staff find so fulfilling, rewarding, and essential in our work with you. On your first day of kindergarten, your parents, they dropped you off or your loved ones, uh, and they brought you to us to school, and they trusted that we would care for you and honor you just like they had at home. And your parents have supported our work with you. They, they've worn different hats. They've been cheerleaders and, and homework tutors and sometimes mediators with us as staff to, to make sure that you had the supports that you needed. And without the supports of your parents, family, and loved ones, our work with you would have been much more challenging, and we wouldn't have achieved the results that we have today. And I am so grateful, and I know you are today too, that your parents were a part of this, the, the Parent Organizing Committee, uh, that your parents weren't able to, to be here and see you cross the stage, but that they were willing to make that sacrifice. So uh, when you go home, thank your loved ones, your family, your guardians, and just recognize that... Uh, they, they give you an opportunity today and they're home watching virtually. So thanks to them. Congratulations uh, to your parents and loved ones on, on your achievement. They were a huge part of that. I would like to acknowledge our staff at Greenall High School. I think very highly of them, uh, as well as all those uh, who've supported your, sec your success through from kindergarten through to graduation today. We know that your road to graduation, it's, it's long and it's arduous, but we couldn't be more proud of, of your perseverance that you show your achievement and that you did graciously share the road with us on the, the way to this day. Graduation is your celebration, but it's our celebration of, of what we do. Uh, we don't make widgets in a factory. Uh, you're what we produce. You're the end product of our work with kids that we really, I hope it feels like uh, we enjoy our work with you. And uh, it came to me this spring. Todd accused me of recycling this from another school that was maybe a little bit more rural. But uh, our work with you, it, it reminds me of the work of the farmer and how the farmer starts by deciding which seeds to plant to ensure a bountiful harvest. When the time is right, adding the necessary, the inputs, the nutrients uh, to unleash the amazing and immense potential within each seed. Every condition is not always favorable or entirely controllable by the farmer, so eternal hope and optimism, they're, they're necessary. I left this joke out for virtual grad, but farmers spending, spend a lot of time making sure that the weeds don't take care of, take over the, the crop, and that's where Mr. Harding and I got to know some of you a little closer. Where's Weatherall? He's not here. Oh, man. I won't have to worry about a hug during presentation. As the crop matures at season end, uh, the farmers is looking forward to harvest and anticipating and, and really proud of, of what's happened. Uh, the farmer beads, beams with pride and satisfaction and gratitude when the crop is harvested. And graduates, I hope this simple analogy helps you understand the personal nature of our work with you. As your staff, we are satisfied, grateful, and proud of the bountiful harvest that you are. You are our harvest. To our teachers and support staff, thank you for your perseverance, courage, compassion, and optimism in supporting our graduating class through to this date. Graduation is a time for us to recognize that we have so much to be proud of. 
What a bizarre end that was to the 2020 school year. Uh, none of you will ever forget it. Uh, while we were apart, we were in it together. Uh, we did sorely miss, even though we were involved in supplemental learning that a couple of you took part in. It was more than that, but uh, we missed you. And we missed being able to see you. And Ms. Marley referenced, uh, Charlie Chaplin said, in the short term, life is a tragedy, but in the long term, life is a comedy. And so looking back, it would have been a little bit of fun for us to, to greet you after stag and co-stag and tell you you have to take off some of the glitter and your jorts or whatever it was. But uh, those, those are all rites of passage that we know they're coming and we anticipate them. And uh, believe it or not, we miss that too. Uh, as cliche as it is, Wiz Khalifa said, it's been a long day without you, but here we are today. I don't have many modern song quotes because your music stinks, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful day by U2, um, celebration by Cool and the Gang, I think that's from the 70s, uh, and here's one, hopefully the dog days are over, that's by Florence and Machine and Hopefully this is an example that uh, we're getting to return to life that is a little bit more recognizable and normal. Uh, but we need to challenge ourselves from, from what we've gone through. If, if this is the greatest challenge of our lives, I, I hope it teaches us a few things. Uh, I'm sure you've been busy since we've left. You've grown and learned as, as young adults uh, entering into independence. I hope that the long absence of our normal existence, that you've learned uh, the importance of connection. And I think you have because you're here today, you're participating in something that's really important. We may have taken for granted just a short while ago the connection and the community that face-to-face -face learning in the four walls of our beautiful school, uh, greeting one another every day, seeing you in the classrooms, that means something. That, that was our community at Greenall. I hope you remember that fondly. I hope that pause in your lives that we've all experienced has, has afforded us the opportunity to reflect on what our normal was. And I hope that now you take the opportunity, you're moving into adulthood, that you recognize you are fully prepared and capable to do amazing things in your life, not just for yourself, but for those around you too. And you're here today taking part in something, not just for yourself, but for those around you. While you inherit a world that has so many complex issues, you're now presented with an opportunity to find infinite solutions. Will you insist on sustainability as you continue to grow Canada in ways previously unimagined? I hope you do. Will you choose to build community through connection, inclusion, respect, and kindness as cornerstones of what other pa whatever path you choose? Will you commit to eradicating injustice and inequity as you build your own future? And while the challenges that lie ahead may seem enormous, they are, and insurmountable, they're not. I ask you to look inside of yourself and recognize the infinite potential that each of you do possess, just as the farmer sees infinite potential within each seed. At Greenall, we say, once a griffin, always a griffin. I'm graduating with you, Mr. Harding is graduating with you, and uh, we couldn't be more honored to have gotten to know you these last three years for me. Uh, we wish you health and happiness and continued success in all that you do. We couldn't be more proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Whitesell. Uh, now we're going to have Mr. Harding uh, speak on behalf of a guest speaker that you guys have selected. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you did watch my speech through the virtual grad or didn't, you can't fast forward through it today, so you gotta, you got to listen to it. Uh, I want you to thank you for inviting me here today, uh, or thank your parents for making you invite me. I don't know which one it was, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm very honored to be here. Um, I'd like to thank the, the organizing committee uh, as well for all of uh, the work they've done to make things happen today for, for all of you uh, throughout the community. 
Uh, I also want to special, uh, pass on a, a special thank you to our, our graduation committee at the school, both the student and the staff group, for all the work that they did behind the scenes to create something memorable. Uh, we had a lot of restrictions for you folks, uh, but at the same time, uh, we wanted to do something that was memorable. And so I think, you know, the I guess the combination of everything, uh, just great work by everybody in the community and everybody at the school uh, for all that they've done. What a bizarre way for you to all go out. Um, I'm not sure at this time any of us can comprehend the events over the last four months, but it sure is great to see all of you in person. It's an absolute honor for me to be here today because it has been my privilege to work with you folks over the last four years at Greenall High School. Our staff has watched you grow from young adolescents, some more mature than others, into young adults with a plethora of different talents and abilities that will serve you well as you move on to what is next. I'm hopeful that you have enjoyed your time here as much as we've enjoyed you. Whether it is the pursuit of academic and extracurricular excellence, putting time in because the requirement of the post most post-secondary institutions, employment opportunities, or because your parents made you, it really is all the same. Mission accomplished, you've graduated, and the journey to graduation is not walked alone, and it was really a pleasure to walk along with you. Finding words of wisdom and inspiration to offer an already very accomplished group, as challenging as it is, but combine that with the challenges of our world today, it mo makes most sense for me to keep things really, really simple for you. My best advice is find your version of happiness. I know, easier said than done. There are a lot of things that can get in the way of that. The world will be very different five, 10, 15 years from now. What will not change is how we choose to handle ourselves as we navigate the realities in front of us. But in the end, our ultimate goal in life is still to find happiness. There are many barriers that are gonna stand in front of that. Those barriers will be other people, they will be situations that are beyond our control, and sometimes the barrier will be yourselves. As you strive to meet personal goals in life, I would encourage you to be reflective in both your personal life and your work life. Develop your own set of values and beliefs. That is what makes you unique. Learn from mistakes and look at them as opportunities for growth. And finally, as the important adults in your life have told you up to this point, Make good choices, not last minute decisions like whether you should go out with friends instead of doing homework, but choose what's important to you and use that as a foundation to make decisions. You will have to make a lot of them. Choose to be understanding and empathetic. It is really, really hard, but you will be better for it. The ability to understand the views and opinions of others while placing judgment is something we as a society need to do better. You will be tested on a consistent basis. In your life, whether it's from your children, your coworkers, your partners, or your teammates, the way we react can have a large impact on challenging situations that we face. Try to understand what other people are feeling and they experience in their own world. We choose to default to empathy rather than always focusing on how we feel in that moment. We'll be better for it. As future leaders in our society, it is critical that we find ways to understand one another. A lot of the turbulence and conflict in our world today is a direct reflection of people not being able to value one another's beliefs. Choose to be resilient. According to Dr. Google, the definition of resilience reads, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. None of us are immune to the rough waters that are beyond our control. Many of you have overcome unsurmountable challenges in your own young lives. For some of you, those challenges may lie ahead, and we can't predict them. Believe in your abilities to have the solution to situations by carrying forward a positive mindset. There is a strong connection between resiliency and mindset. I would caution you the following life lesson. Avoiding problems and defaulting to neg negativity will make life's challenges even more insurmountable. Choose to build relationships. Getting through the daily grind of life can be difficult. 
connecting with empathetic and understanding people can remind you that you're not alone in the midst of all the difficulties. Focusing and finding trustworthy and compassionate individuals who validate your feelings is a healthy approach to daily life. Many of you have experienced or will experience difficult life events that can lead people to isolating themselves. It is important to accept help and support from those who care about you. Positive relationships are the foundation of happiness. When things return to normal, please take time to seek out and embrace those who are important to you. Don't let our virtual connectedness replace what's, more, what's most important, the people that you care about. Make sure to stay connected in actual reality. Visit your family and friends, join a club or a team, become a volunteer in your community. You will be better for it. Mr. Weitzel and I both don't like the phrase, in the real world, because this is your real world. In the last four years, you have experienced and learned firsthand what life is really about and what it takes to be successful. You will continue lessons as you move forward, these lessons as you move forward in a more independent stage of your life. I believe that you are ready for what's next. And 30, 40, 50 years from now, I am hopeful that you will be able to reflect on your many unique successes and accomplishments. I also believe that you will measure your greatest successes in the happiness that you enjoyed and created in this world. I'm so grateful to have spent the last four years with all of you people and to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you today. It's so great to see everybody. It's been an absolutely empty last few weeks, or sorry, last few months, not seeing everybody around on a daily basis. I wish you absolutely nothing but happiness and good health and whatever your new adventure brings. Congratulations. Take care. All right. I'm going to give you some directions because I know some of you are wondering how you're going to come across the stage. So we're going to have another uh, guest speaker. I'm going to turn your eyes towards the screens in just a minute. But during uh, this next little presentation, some of you are going to get shoulder tapped by some of the uh, parent committee. They're going to help you start lining up. Okay, so if you get a shoulder tap, we're going to do it in alphabetical order. We're not going to do it all at once. We're going to break it up. We're going to do three separate um, scroll collections. So if you get a tap, just follow the directions. Keep your six feet apart during this next part, and then I will give you further directions after. So right now, uh, we're going to hear a few words from a uh, former member of the Regina Rams football program. He was also a member of the NFL Seattle Seahawks football team for 10 years, and he is the only Saskatchewan-born uh, person to have ever won a Super Bowl ring. He's one half of an Apple podcast, Kicking It with John and Greg, and most impressively to me, a former contestant on American Ninja Warrior. So let's hear some words from Saskatchewan's own John Ryan. Friends family, teachers, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2020. Welcome. We're so happy you're here to join us today for this very unique but meaningful graduation ceremony. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Ryan. I formerly played in the NFL. I'm currently playing in the CFL for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I'm very proud of the fact that I was born and raised right here in Saskatchewan. It was 20 years ago I was in your shoes graduating from the Sheldon Williams Collegiate with the class of 2000. I know this is a very unique and strange time to be graduating. In grade 12, my biggest fear is what would happen on December 31st, 1999 at midnight. Y2K. Ask your parents if you don't know. This class is facing much bigger challenges, but when this pandemic is over, you'll all be moving on to new experiences. There are a few of my experiences that I want to share with you this afternoon. Being a kid from Regina, trying to make it to the NFL, I faced a lot of adversity. I knew I had to overcome these things to make it. I did not view adversity as negative, but saw it as a challenge and an opportunity to get better. When I was in NFL training camp, trying out against guys from big Division I American schools who were trained in the best facilities and had the best coaching from a young age, I could see them crumble in the face of adversity. A bad practice or game, and they'd be destroyed. They couldn't overcome it. Their advantages in life had left them ill-equipped to handle adversity. So don't use your disadvantages as an excuse. Use them as strength. This graduating class 
a class that was born shortly after 9-11 into a world of new normal, a class that experienced many local and world tragedies during their time on this earth, a class that's graduating in a world pandemic. There's no one better equipped to handle adversity than this group. This too shall pass and things will eventually go back to normal or another new normal but in your life, you're sure to face more personal adversity. You must face these challenges head on with courage. Overcoming adversity is all about being resilient and turning those challenges into opportunities. Dream big. Right now, all of you are stepping into a new phase of your life. There's never been a better time to set your goals and dream big. In high school, I had a dream of playing in the NFL. Many people thought I was crazy, so much so that I stopped telling people about this dream, but I never stopped believing in it. Dreaming big is about believing in endless possibilities. I had this dream, a dream that no one else from Regina had ever accomplished. Because of that, at times, I thought it might not be possible. How will these NFL teams find me? I'd often ask myself. I was putting in all this work, often alone in a park, hours and hours a day since I was seven years old. Would it all be for naught if not one NFL team even saw me? One of the biggest inspirations in my life, my father said to me one day, if you're good enough, they will find you. Just keep working and be so good that you can't be ignored and they will find you. I'll never forget that. It was also at that moment, I thought of all the people that told me I'd never make it. Told me Canadian kids, and especially kids from Saskatchewan, don't make the NFL. Find something else, they'd say. I realized that the voices of the haters and trolls are so much louder than the voices of supporters because non-dreamers want to pull dreamers back down to their level. But for me, the voice of my father, my biggest believer, drowned out all those negative voices. When I would repeat his words to myself, if you're good enough, they will find you. That drove me and motivated me. For the dreamers out there, dream big. Believe in yourself and don't let the voice of non-dreamers control you. But know there is someone in your life that believes in you and is saying right now, if you're good enough, they will find you. Embrace failure. If you're a dreamer and you have your eyes set on a prize, I can guarantee you at some point you will fail and you will probably fail big. That is part of the journey. When I finally made the NFL, I had achieved my dream. I was going into my third season with the Green Bay Packers and one day out of nowhere, I was cut, released, fired. This failure hurt like hell, but did not stop me. I kept going and later I was picked up by the Seattle Seahawks and eventually won the Super Bowl with that team. I'm not telling you this to brag. Well, maybe I am a little bit. But just to remind you that when life knocks you down, it's setting you up for a comeback. I was able to achieve my dreams. But the best part of it all was the journey. In 20 years, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you'll think back on this time in high school, these past four years, and realize it was part of your journey. I want to wish you all the best. I think the future is looking very bright for the graduating class of 2020. If I could leave you with this, always dream big, be ready to fail big, but always enjoy the journey. Congratulations. Okay, graduate, so we're going to begin, and here's all you have to do. So once you line up over there, you're going to enter the stage over here, come up to the basket, pick one of the stro or scrolls out of the basket, and then pause here with Mr. Weitzel uh, for a, fo a photo that's going to be done. Uh, remember, we're not handshaking or hugging today, okay? So uh, we'll just maintain that social distance. At that point, if you wanna exit the stage over here, walk around the back of the tent and then come back to your seats, and then we will resume. Okay, Mr. Harding, if you'd like to come on up, and we will begin delivering the scrolls. Where would you like Mr. Weitzel? Where would you like him? Yeah. No, no, we're just not going to hug or handshake. Perfect. There we go. Everybody good? Graduates? Ready? All right, Mr. Harding, if you'd please. Graduate Azan Ali.
live. Graduate, Alexander Bott. <laughs> Graduate, Bailey Balaberta. Graduate, Benjamin Ballman. <laughs> Graduate, Bryce Bell. Graduate, Maximus Bender. <laughs> Graduate, Chandler Besbaraco. Graduate, Baxter Blair. <laughs> Graduate, Alexandra Kane. Graduate, Hannah Calababa. <laughs> Graduate, Brighton Callahan. Graduate, Lucas Capelli. <laughs> Graduate, Ethan Carnahan. Graduate, Alex Carpenter. <laughs> Graduate, 
Graduate, Rebecca Carroll. Graduate, Brandon Carey. Graduate, Beck Chikilo. Graduate, Autumn Chomos. Graduate, Hannah Christensen. Graduate, Gannett Coghill. Graduate, Nicole Cole. Graduate, Connor Crook. Graduate, Brooklyn Danbrook. Graduate, Alexis Diamond. Graduate, Kira Downs. Graduate, Rhea Everly.
graduate Ty Fairley. Graduate, Madison Flamin. <laughs> Graduate, Sasha Foster. Graduate, Mayel Fournier. <laughs> Graduate, Christopher Francis. Graduate, Jordan Garrett. Graduate, Brendan George. Graduate, Brecklin Gervais. <laughs> Graduate, Connor Geibel. Graduate, Jonah Glass. Graduate, Carter Gottsleek. Graduate, Christopher Grad. Graduate, Samuel Graham.
graduate Darby Graham Rowe. So good so far. All right, first group done. If you want to turn your attention to the screens again, we have a few different connections and comments for you guys. Hey, everybody. It's Rod Peterson here from The Rod Peterson Show. And I just want to say congratulations to all the grads. This 2020 grad is going to be the one that you will never, ever, ever forget. So make the most of it. Be safe. Do not screw up your life because it is just beginning. And you know what? Don't take my word for it. We got some advice here from some of my friends. So watch this. Hello, graduates of Greenall High School, 2020, the class of. My name is Craig McMorris. I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. Uh, I said it for 28 years, and I graduated high school. So congratulations to you. Now, life. Okay, it's like the parking lot at Greenall. You're gonna have your four by four jacked up trucks. You're gonna have your souped up BMWs. Then you're gonna have a bunch of regular cars. Every one of them is important. Try everything, do everything, go everywhere because this is the very start. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. So take this opportunity because it can only go up from here. Love you guys, congratulations, class of 2020. Hi Greenall. Happy graduation. My name is Kelly Bouchard and I'm an Olympic gold medalist in hockey. I grew up just down the road in Sedley. I'm sending a message from beautiful downtown Calgary, Alberta. And what I want to say is uh, you guys have faced a ton of adversity this year. And what I've learned through sport is adversity makes you stronger. And in my opinion, now you guys are ready to take on the world. So get out there, have fun, enjoy, be safe and go Riders. Okay, some of you are being shoulder tapped right now. We are going to line up our next group of graduates. Just a reminder, when you come up, grab your scroll, pose for your photo, and then make your way around the back. Mr. Harding, if you're ready. Graduate Wyatt Goulash. Graduate Brooke Hampson. Graduate Keely Hassman. Graduate Avery Heller. <laughs> Graduate Joshua Hornai.
graduate, Caitlin Eichert. Graduate, Taylor Johnson. <laughs> Graduate, Cameron Jones. Graduate, Kara Jordans. Graduate, Kelly Kardash. Graduate, Carly Kaspik. Graduate, Anna Kitchen. Graduate, Jackson Claypack. My apologies, that was Clappack, not Claypack. Graduate, Joshua Kobach. Graduate, Megan Kozar. <laughs> Graduate, Hannah Kovacs. Graduate, Craig Kowalik.
graduate, Ellison Kozan. Graduate Holland Kozan. <laughs> Graduate Sarah Kozan. Graduate Brett Kruger. Graduate Colby Lang. Graduate William Lewis. Graduate Brianna Lindemann. Graduate, Rylan Lindgren. Graduate, Chloe Loker. Uh, also, before Braden, uh, I'd like to recognize graduate Bridget Lennon, who could not attend with us today. Braden Lolliker. Graduate Nathan Macknack. Graduate 
Brooke Marcica. Graduate, Bowden Marley. Graduation, graduate, Ethan McAlpin. Graduate, Danielle Mitchell. Graduate, Nolan Nagel. Graduate, Jared Nelson. Graduate, Lane Novak. Graduate, Gage Olson. <laughs> Graduate, Abby Patterson. Graduate, Caitlin Paul. Graduate, Christopher Payette.
as we're uh, breaking up our, our diploma pickups, uh, I have the honor of introducing to you uh, your 2020 valedictorian. Uh, sometimes a popular vote uh, doesn't guarantee the best results. So this year at Greenall, we return to uh, the traditional selection of valedictorian, someone who attained the highest uh, mark standing as well as displaying uh, character and integrity and school involvement. Those were the criteria. Uh, so our valedictorian, of course, with 150 pretty sharp colleagues and a, a couple of sisters to, uh, to spur her on. It's no small feat to attain the highest uh, grade point average in a high school the size of ours. Uh, Holly Kozan has been surrounded by you as her peers and those sisters uh, and Holly has maintained the highest academic, academic standing each of her four years at Greenall and that's a, that's a really exceptional accomplishment. Uh, and so we had to wait until our school year was complete Students were participating in supplemental learning, uh, and so at the virtual grad, we didn't present this award, award but it is my honor to, uh, to call up Holly to offer us the valedictory address, but she's also the recipient of the Governor General's Academic Medal for uh, attaining the highest academic standing at Greenall this year, so congratulations, Holly. Come forward and deliver our address. <laughs> Good afternoon, parents, teachers, everyone watching this live stream, and most importantly, my fellow classmates. My name is Holland Kozan, and I'd like to welcome you to our second graduation ceremony of 2020. You know, when Mr. Harding first contacted me about representing our class as valedictorian, I was pretty intimidated by the whole thing. Anyone who knows me knows that public speaking isn't my forte. So you can only imagine my relief when I realized that our graduation would be a virtual one and the excessive amount of nerves I had when I realized that I would have to speak for a second time in front of everyone else today. So for time constraints and mostly my slight fear of public speaking, I will only ask for a few minutes of your time. In all seriousness, I would like to reflect on the past four years at Greenall High School. But before I do, I would just like to thank the people who have made the past four years possible. First and foremost, thank you to the teachers, staff, and administrators at Greenall. If it wasn't for you guys, many of us wouldn't have achieved our goals over the past four years. Thank you for volunteering your time so we could pursue our passions and for always being there to help us out. And a huge thank you to everyone who has organized this event. Thank you to the parents who are persistent and adamant that we concluded these four years in the same way we started them, together. Before we even stepped into the hallways of Greenall High School, we were told that these next four years would be the best years of our lives. Cliche as it sounds, that comment wasn't totally wrong. However, I don't think that the traditional definition of the word best is applicable to our time at Greenall. I think the word best in our graduating class's case means the most educational, the most eventful, the most exciting, and definitely the most memorable. What sets us apart from every other graduating year is that our story is unique. I mean, when was the last time someone had two graduation ceremonies, let alone a six-month summer? It wasn't just the abrupt end to our senior year that made our high school experience different. It was every single individual that walked the halls at Greenall. We all came from different elementary schools and neighborhoods. Some of us lived on farms, others tightly packed neighborhoods, and some on acreages. We came from different elementary schools and were expected to dive into the whole high school thing head first. However, when we walked the halls of Greenall High School, we were only known as Griffins. And our shared experiences within the walls of Greenall bound us all together. 
whether we knew it or not. There are obviously some moments in the past four years that we will remember more easily and that we will tell stories about to our kids and our grandkids one day, like our time during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, after plugging in the numbers and doing the math, because you know very well that I actually would do the math, I figured out that we were only missing 9% of the best four years of our lives. Of course, that 9% was supposed to be filled with some of the most exciting parts of high school, senior traditions, parties, and the graduation day in itself. And I know that any single one of us would trade the first 9% of high school for the last in a heartbeat, but unfortunately, we don't actually get to decide when a world pandemic plagues our lives. So instead of focusing on our lack of senior year, I'm going to encourage everyone to remember the larger part of our high school experience, the 91%. We, as the class of 2020, shouldn't let this measly 9% outshine the other excellent 91% of our time at Greenall. Instead, we should recognize how we have persevered against all odds to make it here today. We found ways to stay in touch through social media, group chats, and FaceTimes. We conquered that crappy 9% of our high school careers and came out united and stronger together because of it. And I know everyone is tired of talking about COVID and these missed opportunities. So instead, let's focus on that 91% and the memories we shared together. We share the memories of nervousness and excitement on the first day of grade nine and the memories of walking through the winter snow and cold to the curling rink and the anticipated student versus teacher hockey game in December. I think we all can remember frantically scribbling down extra notes on our cheat sheets before Kosman's exams and counting the amount of times Mr. Lechner stopped a video to tell us exactly what Bill Nye would say before he said it. We share the memories of pep rallies and concert-like performances at talent shows before spring things. I think we all share an intense love for bagels, for obvious reasons, and if you don't, you are seriously missing out. Our shared commitment to success in academics and extracurriculars was evident in our multiple successes throughout the years, whether that was on the court or in the classroom. And many of us will be able to remember the funnier moments at Greenall, like a failed cooking experiment. I, for one, may or may not have hot glued my gingerbread house together and flooded my sink multiple times. Maybe you'll remember Mr. Kosman's dedication to Halloween costumes or the times when Lane and Colby would come to school dressed up as high school stereotypes. These memories I've just mentioned are just a few of the thousand moments in time throughout the past four years that have contributed to our high school experience. These unique experiences at Greenall are what makes us Griffins. So as we move on from this milestone in our lives, I hope we can continue to cherish our past memories and friends and make new ones too. And I hope that these past four years and sudden conclusion to our senior year have put the world into perspective. The world isn't always fair. And if you spend your life focusing on the ugly 9% of it, you'll forget to recognize the other amazing 91%. So own that 90%, learn, or own that 9%, learn from that 9%, but don't let it cast a shadow over the other 91%, because that small percentage is only a sliver of what makes up our lives. Class of 2020, we have survived a lot to go together over these past four years, and I believe it has prepared us for the challenges that await us out there in the world. So I'd like to end this off with a short inspirational quote. To the class of 2020, take pride in how far you've come, have faith in how far you can go, but don't forget to enjoy the journey. Thanks. All right, graduates, our last group of our cohort is going to be walking across the stage. And when that's complete, I'm going to give you some final directions uh, for what's going to happen after the scroll presentation. Almost there. Mr. Harding, Mr. Weitzel.
graduate, Carter Phelps. Graduate, Paige Rodmacher. <laughs> Graduate, Erica Reichel. Graduate Hunter Reichel. Graduate Madison Renwick. Graduate, Megan Ritz. Graduate, Jenna Saviston. Graduate, Cameron Sassenick. Graduate, Hunter Sattler. Graduate, Baron Schaefer. Graduate, Lucas Schmidt. Graduate, Paige Schmidt. Yeah. 
graduate Sarah Schutz. Graduate Dylan Smank. Graduate Ethan Smith. Graduate Sean Sirocco. Graduate Riley Stam. Graduate Nolan Stout. Graduate Ty Strawford. Graduate Taylor Strudwick. Graduate Luke Swetlow. Graduate Brandon Sirota. Graduate Jericho Zemin. Graduate Zoe Zemin.
graduate, Cameron Thompson. Graduate, Autumn Tiefenbach. <laughs> Graduate, Taylor Trackalo. Graduate, Brett Tuck. Graduate, Caden Volman. Not here with us today is Luke Lucas Walter. Graduate Jackson Warnicky. Graduate, Janaea Westerman. Graduate, Reed Wilchawi. Graduate, Jace Wilkie Lowndes. Graduate, Cassandra Wilson. Graduate, Sasha Winter.
Graduate, Aiden Wozni. That is the graduating class that's joined us today of 2020. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Miss Marley's gonna come up and give you some instructions on the next part. I know I'm the furthest thing from a male model, so just standing there as you picked up your scroll, that felt a little bit awkward. So when I see you around at Starbucks or on the golf course or at Craven, wherever it is, come up for a handshake, hugs or free bread if you want one. But uh, this was a real pleasure today, so thanks for being here, and, and it was nice to celebrate you. Whoop, whoop. Good for you guys. One last thing to do. So we're going to polish it off with the traditional uh, grad hat toss. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to collect all the stuff that's underneath your chairs, grab all your gear. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to head out over to the large field. Now pay attention, last directions you're ever going to have to take from me. When you get there, you're going to stand by hat, not you, Bowden, you're always going to be taking directions from me. Okay, but the rest of you, you're going to stand by a hat. Now, Sorota, pay attention. I don't want you to pop up early. Do not throw it. Okay, you're going to stand there. We're going to take one photo first with your caps, and then you're going to get directions from the photographer, and then we're all going to toss them up at the same time to get that photo too. Once you have thrown your cap, you are officially done. You're on your own. Make sure if you didn't get a photo in the balloon arch to do that before you leave, and then everybody collect your photo that was on the path that you walked in, okay? Those are yours as a gift from the grad committee. So you're gonna grab one of your photos um, on your way out. So uh, let's start with the front row. We're gonna have you guys head out first. We're gonna make our way over. There's one hat there for everybody. So just stand by a hat and then we're gonna take our final two photos. Congratulations, class of 2020.